Escape the room! It's me, Barker Mifflin, master of all danger. One of the most important parts of being a survival expert is knowing how to escape a room. Survival nugget number 27, there's always a way out. You just have to find it. The key to escaping a room is being able to notice all the little details hiding right in front of you. And that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. I'm going to train you to see things you might have missed and before long, you'll be an escape room expert just like me. Let the training begin. Ah, as you can see, we've arrived in a very strange room. It looks like someone has been doing some spy work in here. Okay, here's your first test. Count up the number of lights in the room. Then figure out what letter of the alphabet that number is. You've only got a few seconds. Go! Time's up. If you counted the lights like I did, then you came up with six lights strung across the room. Nice job. And if the letter A is the first letter in the alphabet, then the sixth letter is... F. You've got your first letter in the code that will get us out of this room. Huh, I like where this is going. Moving on. There's something you use to drink hot chocolate out of in this room. Find that object. Once you do that, you'll need to figure out what's in the front of the object. It's a symbol. What's the first letter of the symbol? I'll give you a few seconds to figure it out. Here's hoping you passed this part of the survival readiness test. Did you find the coffee cup sitting on the arm of the chair? I bet you did. And if you did, then you know the symbol on the front of the coffee cup is a tree. We're looking for the first letter in tree, and that's T. Oh, we're rolling now. Almost halfway done solving all the puzzles in this room. Barker Mifflin Survival Nugget number 213. When you have a big challenge, aim for the halfway point. It's all downhill from there. Here's your next task. Count all the drawers in this room, then count all the pieces of paper on the wall in this room. What's the total of those two numbers? I'll give you a clue. It's unlucky. But I don't believe in luck. I believe in being prepared. I'll give you a few extra seconds to figure this one out. Time's up. Turns out there are six drawers and seven pieces of paper. And that's a total of 13. Hey, look, you've made it halfway through. That's real progress, trainee. You're definitely going to escape this room eventually. On to the fourth challenge, and it's the hardest one yet. I'm really going to challenge you this time. Here goes. Figure out how many locker doors are closed. Then multiply that number by the number of cans of tomato sauce in the room. Go! Ooh, that was a little more complicated, but let's see how you did. There are two closed lockers in the room, and hopefully you found the three cans with tomatoes on them. Two multiplied by three is six. Look at all the progress you're making. It's amazing. But we're not done yet. Let's knock out another puzzle right now. And since the last one was pretty hard, this one will be easy. Something is heating up in this room. You need to find the first letter of the thing that's heating up. Go! Did you find what's heating up in the room? It's a teapot. And the first letter in T is T. One more puzzle to go and it's a doozy. Are you ready to escape the room? Let's do this. One letter is hidden somewhere in this room. It's in plain sight, but it's not easy to find. Can you find the hidden letter? Just in case you haven't found it, I'll give you a clue. It's above the chair. And that's
That's time. The letter is hidden right up there, next to the lockers. And the letter is S. We did it! We activated the escape hatch from this room. You're good, real good. You solved six puzzles and unlocked an escape room. That's all the training for you today, but there's so much other great stuff to explore on the Bonkers channel. There's a Bonkers the Animated Show, Snurf Fests and Snurf Searches, riddles and jokes with my good buddies Jenny and Ben, and there's even a Bonkers book. Just search for Bonkers wherever you find your books. And don't forget to subscribe to the Bonkers channel so you don't miss any of the new Bonkers stuff dropping every week. I'm off to my zombie survival class, but come back next time for more puzzle-solving training. Barker Mifflin, signing off. Escape the room! Riddles and jokes! Hey, it's me, Jenny Kim. I live in this strange town of Nevermind, and I also collect riddles because I love riddles. And if you love riddles too, you've come to the right place. It's riddle time! Put your thinking cap on and here we go! What has many rings but no fingers? Many rings but no fingers? Hmm, sounds like a zombie to me. That is not correct, but thank you for playing. A car tire. The best way to solve this riddle is to think of something that rings. Can you think of anything that rings? It's time to reveal the answer. What has many rings but no fingers? It's a phone. A phone rings, but it doesn't have any fingers. Hey, I have a joke about phones. Want to hear it? Sure. How can you tell if a bee is on the phone? I don't know, Fen. How can you tell if a bee is on the phone? You get a buzzy signal. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a pretty good joke. But I like riddles. Let's move on to riddle number two. I'm a Greek god, a planet, and I measure heat. Who am I? Wow, whoever this is, they're a big deal. Let's see. If it's a Greek god, it's probably someone popular, right? Like Zeus. But Zeus isn't a planet, and it doesn't measure heat. A planet. Saturn? Nope, that's not right. Mars? That's not it. Is there a planet that's also a Greek god? There is. It's Mercury. Because Mercury is a planet, it's in thermometers, so it measures heat. And Mercury is one of the Greek gods. Look at us go. I've got a good space joke. Want to hear it? Sure. How does NASA throw a party? Um... They plan it. <laughs> Get it? You know, they plan the party. Plan it, but it's also a planet like Mercury. I will return with a better joke. Hmm. While Fen is looking for another joke, let's do another riddle. Here we go. What two things can you never have before breakfast? This is a tricky one, but I bet you can figure it out. Do you know the answer? Here's a clue. The answer is all about the stuff you eat and when you eat it. So what two things can't you eat before breakfast? Lunch and dinner. Hey, I want lunch and dinner. What about a joke instead? You got it, Jenster. What does an elf learn at school? I don't know, Fen. What does an elf learn at school? The alphabet! <laughs> Get it? The alphabet! Like alphabet? Oh, I got it. But riddle me this. Can't riddle now. Gotta go find a knock-knock joke. If you drop me, I'm sure to crack. But smile at me, and I'll smile back. What am I? Another tricky one. Here's a clue just for you. When you get up in the morning and you brush your teeth, you probably look into one of these. Now do you know what it is? 
It smiles back at you. But if it fell on the ground, it would probably break. It's... a mirror! If you drop a mirror, it will break. And if you look into a mirror, it will smile back at you. Knock, knock! Who's there? Cows go. Cows go who? No, cows go moo! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was pretty good. Finn Stenson for the win! Come on back next time for more riddles and jokes with your good buddies, Ben Stenson and Jenny Kim. And check out all the other cool stuff on the Bonkers channel. There's loads of fun. Bonkers the Animated Show, Barker Mifflin's Escape Rooms, Snurf Fests, and Snurf Searchers. It's all happening. It sure is. And there's even a Bonkers book. Just search for Bonkers wherever you get your books. And make sure to subscribe to the Bonkers channel for new videos every week. Come on, Jen Jen, let's roll! Riddles and jokes! Snurf search! Ha! 
Blurb Fest! Jenny Kim, and I live in that little town right down there. From way up here, it looks like a normal place to be a kid. But the closer you get, the more you'll realize this place is bonkers. The town is called Nevermind, as in, never mind, nothing to see here, just pass on through. And that's what most people do. But you're not most people, and we need your help because Nevermind is actually full of secrets and mysteries. Oh, hi. It's me, Jenny Kim, the one that's been talking. And the building behind me is the most secretive and mysterious place in the whole town of Nevermind. And that's saying something. This is my good buddy, Barker Mifflin. Barker is a doomsday prepper, right, Barker? I'm skipping my zombie defense class for this. You said something about an emergency? I see you brought your fly swatter. I also have my toothbrush, two water bottles, and a ping pong paddle. Barker Mifflin survival nugget number 309. Always bring a ping pong paddle. That's obvious. Okay. We gotta love you. Oh, man. You invited Fen Stenson? I did. Fen is the most unprepared person in the history of people. He couldn't find his way out of a paper bag. Yeah, but he's so fun. What's up, Jen Jen? He never gets my name right. Barky Bark Bark, my man. Please address me by my actual name. Barker Mifflin, master of all danger. You got it, Barko Tree Bark. So, what's the haps? If this situation doesn't become dangerous in three seconds or less, I'm leaving. I got a message from Dr. Vexler. Ooh, she's definitely dangerous. You have my attention. As you might recall, Dr. Vexler was one of the scientists who used to run colossal chemistry the abandoned building we're standing in front of. Vex is trouble with a capital V for very large amounts of trouble. Ooh, I like where this is going. And as I'm sure you also remember, they were doing all sorts of very sneakerative stuff in that building. Sneakerative, sneaky, and secretive. And dangerous, definitely dangerous. Right. She sent me this note. Your assistance is required at the Colossal Chemistry Building. X marks the spot. P.S. The X is on the roof of the building. Dr. Vexler. On the roof of the building? Oh, now we're talking. Climbing buildings is a hobby of mine. Why am I not surprised? Yeah, but can we really trust Dr. Vexler? Absolutely not which will likely lead to lots of danger. To the roof! That escalated quickly. He's already climbing. Are we really doing this? We're really doing this. He's halfway up the side of the building. Where'd Barker go? Hey, Barkmeister! Maybe he had a parachute in his backpack and he jumped off the building. I don't see an X. Do you? Barker! I've done a perimeter sweep. It's safe to come down. There's the X. He must have jumped into that pipe. Jumping into a pipe is not a good idea. It's a great idea and also very dangerous. Come on! Clear the landing area! I'm coming in! Fence Stenson for the win! Come on, Jenny! 
this does seem like a dangerous idea. But my two best buddies are down there. <sighs> Out of the way! I'm coming through! Uh, uh, ouch. Oh, whoa. Wow, you really are good at falling down a hole. Stuck the landing. Where's Ben Stenson? I think it's his way of getting a look around. What is all this stuff? I believe it's some sort of unfinished mad scientist experiment. I bet they were trying to make a werewolf. Or maybe a snow cone. Hello? Is this thing on? <coughs> do, do you read me? Hang on, let me see here. We can hear you just fine. Dr. Vexler? Maybe if I turn this dial to the left. Can you hear me? Is anyone there? It's too loud now. Turn it the other way. Hang on, I see what I did here. How about now? Can you hear me now? We could always hear you. Excellent! I see you found my message and the X on the roof. Well done. Hey, Dr. V. You brought Fen Stenson. He's my buddy. Plus, he's fun. Why did you bring us here, Dr. Vexler? Is there a giant troll loose in the building? You have strange friends, Jenny Kim. I know, right? I need all three of you to listen carefully. The head of this facility, one Howard Huxley, has left a terribly dangerous mess behind, and I'm going to need your help to clean it up. Howard Huxley? He's trouble with a capital HST for huge, stinky trouble. I can get you to the bottom of the building, but you'll need to be the eyes on this little adventure. I can hear you, but I can't see inside the rooms. Where are you, anyway? That's top secret information! But I can confirm that I am not in a dungeon under the building called Sector 7. She's in a dungeon under the building called Sector 7. Totally. Howard Huxley left an extremely unstable situation in the Colossal Chemistry Building. He also put some sort of puzzle in each of the rooms that you'll have to solve. It's his unusual way of locking rooms. Wouldn't a key be easier? Keys can be lost or stolen, but a puzzle can always be solved. Also, Howard Huxley said. So it's like an escape room. But there are many rooms to escape. It's more like an escape building. And if you don't escape all the rooms, it's possible the world will come to an end. So you trapped us in a deserted chemistry lab so we could solve your problem? And save the world! You had me at save the world. I'm in. We can do it! Plus, we can't get out of the building unless you get us to the bottom. So we're kind of committed. Excellent! Hold, please. Did she just put us on hold? She... I've returned. What do you see? A big screen and a table with some beakers and colored liquid. Hey, there's a trap door on the floor. Cool. I think it's locked, but there's a keypad to enter three numbers if that's good for anything. Don't touch that keypad. I'm currently dancing on the keypad, but I didn't touch it. We're good. Port, please. You'll only get one shot at this, so make sure you do it right. Pour the liquid in the tall green beaker into the triangle-shaped purple bottle. And don't spill a single drop. Okay. Who turned out the lights? It's a total whiteout. All according to plan. You should be in the clear in three, two, one. The chalkboard has an image on it now. Ah, good, good. It's a puzzle. You'll need to solve the puzzle in less than 60 seconds. What happens if we don't solve the puzzle in time? The building will self-destruct. What? We should probably focus on the puzzle. That's the spirit. <sighs> okay, I'm fine now. Uh-oh. Uh, 
What's the uh-oh for? And what was that sound? You need to get to the next room fast or we're going to have a serious problem. A problem more serious than having the building blow up? Oh, much more serious than that. Six. How did you do that? It's a Sudoku puzzle. I'm super into Sudokus. Look, now there are plus and minus signs. All we have to do is finish each one and we'll have the answer. Then go stand next to the trapdoor and get ready to dance those numbers in. You got it, Jenster. You have 20 seconds left. No pressure. Nine plus one minus five. Five. Five entered. Four plus eight minus three. Nine. Nine entered. Two plus six minus seven. One. One entered. Whoa! <laughs> Just kidding. Come on. Through the door in the floor. Whoa! 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 Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? Port, please. Where are we? What is this place? Hey, it's a tunnel. Follow me. I can protect us with my fly swatter. Our dangerous mission gets more interesting by the minute. Where does this tunnel lead? Somewhere dangerous. One can only hope. Who's up for some dance music? Don't even think about it. <laughs> I didn't think about it. You guys are the best. Hey, did you know you can read the first Bonkers book? It's true. It's called Bonkers, the Terror in Jenny's Armpit. Ah! Yep, it's my armpit, and it is terrifying. You're gonna love it. It tells a whole different story with me, Barker Mifflin, and Fen Stenson. Just search for Bonkers wherever you get your books. And come on back for episode two of Bonkers the Animated Show. See you next time. If you can hear me, you must be careful where you go in this building. It has many dangerous rooms and only one way to escape. Hello? Hello? Hold, please.